In this video, we're going to learn a new concept called factoring and how factoring relates to the distributive property. Let's say we have an algebraic expression like this. Now, if we were being asked to expand this algebraic expression, we would simply use the distributive property. You might recall that all we have to do is 6 times 5p plus 6 times 4. And of course, our result is 30p plus 24. So we realize then that through the use of the distributive property, we're able to go from here to here. Keep in mind that these two things are equal to each other. So what that means is that just as how we were able to go from this side all the way down to here, I should also be able to go from here back to there. And of course, naturally, if you gave me this algebraic expression and I somehow went all the way back to there, then what I have done is literally I have undone the distributive property that you have used. So this process of undoing the distributive property is known as factoring. So to factor out this algebraic expression, we need to be able to see that both terms here are divisible by 6. What I mean by divisible is that when you divide each term by 6, there won't be any remainders. It will divide evenly. So if we are able to see that, then we can simply rewrite 30p as 6 times 5 times p. After all, 6 times 5 is 30 and 30 times p is 30p. Similarly, we should be able to write 24 as 6 times 4. So now, if we take a step back and look at what we have, it looks like we have two terms and both terms are being multiplied by 6. And since every single term we have is being multiplied by the same number, we can factor out the 6. And what we get is 6 times 5p plus 4. And if you want to double check if you factored things correctly, then all you have to do is try expanding the algebraic expression that you ended with, and you should be getting the very first expression that you started from. After all, expanding is the process of using the distributive property. So it's evident to us that we did factor this correctly. Great. Now that was our first example for factoring. But let's use the exact same expression and try factoring out a different number. First of all, let's be a little bit more organized and write down all of the factors for 30 and all the factors for 24. Remember that a factor is a number that can be divided into another number evenly. So what we mean by this is 6 was a factor for 30 because when you do 30 divided by 6, you got 5. 5 is a whole number. It wasn't 5.15, 5.078. It was just 5. So you should be able to get a whole number as a result of dividing by a factor. When we're trying to list out factors of 30, it might be helpful to think of it in combinations. For example, 1 times 30 is 30. Therefore, 1 and 30 are factors. Also, 2 times 15 is 30. Therefore, 2 and 15 are factors. 3 times 10 is also 30. Therefore, 3 and 10 are factors. And lastly, 5 times 6 is 30. And therefore, 5 and 6 are factors. So here is the list of all of the different factors of 30. Now let's make a list for all of the factors for 24. We know that 1 times 24 equals 24. 2 times 12 equals 24. 3 times 8 equals 24. And finally, 4 times 6 equals 24. Awesome! So you'll notice that some of the factors for 30 are also factors for 24. When you see these common factors, we call them common factors. It's certainly not the most creative way to name it, but I guess it at least makes sense. 
And of course, we also see that some factors are not shared at all. For example, 5 over here is not a factor for 24, but it is a factor for 30. So 5 would not be a common factor. Now, you might have realized that 6 was the number that we originally factored out in one of our earlier examples. Notice here that 6 is the greatest common factor. Now this is actually a terminology. Some people like to say GCF for greatest common factor. And in general, if somebody asks you to factor out an expression, what they're really asking you to do is to factor out the greatest common factor. Of course, somebody might ask you to do something much more specific. For example, what if somebody wanted us to factor out a 2? Well, first of all, we know that this is possible because 2 is a common factor. So let's start with our original expression, which is 30p plus 24. Now we know that 30 divided by 2 is 15, so I'm going to rewrite 30p as 2 times 15p. We know that 24 divided by 2 is 12. So I'm going to rewrite 24 as 2 times 12. So we literally rewrote every single term with a multiplication of 2 in it, meaning that we can just factor out the 2. What we would get is 2 times bracket 15p plus 12. Lastly, let's try factoring out a 3, just for fun. After all, we do see from our chart of all of the factors for 30 and all of the factors for 24 that 3 is a common factor. And of course, we know that if something is a common factor, it can be factored out. Okay, so we start with our original expression, 30p plus 24. Of course, 30 divided by 3 is 10, so I'm going to rewrite 30p as 3 times 10p. and 24 divided by 3 is 8, so I'm going to rewrite 24 as 3 times 8. What we end up with is 3 times 10p plus 8 bracketed. Awesome! Now let's take a look at this example here. We can see that 3 and 7 will have no common factors. 3 has the factors of 1 and 3. 7 has the factors of 1 and 7. And although 1 is a common factor for both terms, 1 is a common factor for all of the terms, and it wouldn't actually help us to factor out a 1. And here's the reason why. Let's say we chose to see the 3p as 1 times 3p. Let's say we chose to see the 7p squared as 1 times 7p squared. Well, if we factor out the 1, we would get 1 times bracket 3p plus 7p squared. Now we know that anything multiplied by 1 is just going to be that same number. Therefore, we're left with 3p plus 7p squared. And that's the exact same thing that we started with. So of course, it will never help us to factor out a 1. But we can factor something else out here. As you can see in the first term, we have a multiplication of 3 and p. In our second term, we have a multiplication of 7, p, and another p. After all, p squared is p times p. So if p is being multiplied to both the first term and the second term, then we can factor out a p. What we would end up getting is p times bracket 3 plus 7p. Great, so let's try factoring out one more expression. Here we have 10GA minus 30GZ. So let's try to be a little organized here and write out the factors of 10 and the factors of 30 off on the side as scratch work. Now for the factors of 10, we have 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. Let's just write them in order so that it'll be easy to organize it. And for the factors of 30, we have 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and 5 and 6. And again, let's just write them out in order so that it is organized. 
So now we see that there are many common factors. We are interested in looking for the greatest common factor. In our situation here, we have 10 as our greatest common factor. So we know that this expression that we have can be seen as 10 multiplied by GA minus 10 multiplied by 3GZ. And of course, now we can factor out the 10 and what we get is 10 multiplied by bracketed GA minus 3GZ. But wait a second. Did we make a mistake here? Is there something that we can factor out on top of that 10? And it turns out to be the case that there is. In terms of numbers, or shall I say in terms of the coefficients, we certainly did take out the greatest common factor. However, there is a common variable that is being multiplied to both terms that we actually forgot to factor out we see that both terms are being multiplied by g, and so it's pretty clear that g could have also been factored out. In fact, let's just rearrange a few things just to make it even more clear. Instead of writing 10 times g a, we could have seen this as 10 g times a minus 10 g times 3 z. And if you see it like this, all of 10 g and we do know that 10 is being multiplied by g, but in any case, all of 10g can be factored out. Our final answer for this would be 10g times bracket a minus 3z. Awesome! So let's just do a very quick review of what we learned today. We learned that just as how there is a distributive property to get from one form of an expression to another, the factoring process takes you in a complete opposite route. It is literally a reverse process of what distribution would do, and you can even think of it as undistributing something. So we hope that you enjoyed our introduction to factoring. It is a very important concept that we will be elaborating much more on in the future. So until next time, have a good one.